What's going on there, DEF CON 16? Come on, let's yeah. hear it. Come on. <laughs> we need some audience uh, participation. Get some shirts. Get the hands up. Come on. Come on, let's do it. Hey, a, yeah, let's hear it. Woo! All right. Hey, a couple shout outs real quick. We want to obviously thank uh, DEF CON for having us up here. Uh, specifically DT. It's been a long time, but we finally made it up here. Appreciate you guys having us. Great party yesterday. Had a number of uh, interesting events happen, so obviously Las Vegas, what happens here stays here. Here's what we're going to talk about, guys. We're going to talk about some cool stuff that's coming out and some tools released, um, talking specifically about what we can do around SQL injection. We're going to talk a little bit about how we're able to bypass AV and do some uploads to uh, some packets and put some tools up on the server and see us compromise some stuff. Great talk before us. We're going to introduce the panel here, if we can. I'm Ken Stasiak. We're all from Secure State. Uh, next to me is uh, Dave Kennedy, Relic, uh, author of Fast Track. Fast Track, anybody use it? In Backtrack? Uh, all right, all right. We got, we got a couple. We're going to show it. If you haven't used it before, we're going to show it. Um, obviously, uh, Dave's got a number of years of experience. He's good at uh, automating the security uh, process and putting things in place to allow us to uh, efficiently do our job. Next to him is, uh, well, actually, I'm going to go in order here. We've got Scott White here. Scott, his uh, expertise is web application security. Um, we're going to see a lot of uh, what he's brought through with his uh, SA exploiter. And then we have uh, Andrew Weidenheimer. His expertise is obviously network and staying off the list. <laughs> if uh, you guys know what the list is, no. Say it, dude. Say it. Say it. Say it. What's the uh, what's the web? <laughs> Full disclosure, there. Andrew wants to stay off that list. So if you're interested in that, come see Andrew. Keep me off that list. All right, we're going to talk about a case study here. And as I said, you know, Secure State, we're an information security company based in Cleveland, Ohio. What we do is ethical pen testing. So what you're going to find is we do about 120 different pen tests a year for different clients, ranging from government all the way to commercial. In this specific example, we brought a Fortune 100 organization, and through the course of uh, hacking into the organization, we've developed some tools that we thought would be pretty cool to release. And we're going to actually be demoing those tools and releasing them at the end of this presentation. The case study is going to actually walk through how we use those tools, how we developed them, and then specifically what you can do to use those ethically uh, in your own course of penetration testing. All right, when we do the demonstrations and testings, the first case study is going to walk pretty quickly through the tools. Uh, we've seen a number of different presentations, and what we like is when we can do some high-end, fast uh, demonstration of the tools, and then if you're interested at the end, uh, getting more in-depth and more detail to the tools themselves, we can actually go through that. And then at the end, if you haven't seen Fast Track, we're actually going to do a wrap up and show some Fast Track with uh, Backtrack in embedded in that, obviously. What else we got there? One more time. Has anybody uh, saw the, the topic with Kurt? A great topic at NTLM is dead. And we had uh, literally hours of fun uh, talking about the Squirtle and the way that we were using it. So I want to just give props out to that. Awesome uh, presentation from Kurt. And without further ado, we're going to start the live demonstration. Thank you. Hey, guys. How's it going? All right, so our whole, our whole point of this presentation was to kind of go over what we were doing uh, for a Fortune 100 company. And, you know, SQL injection attacks aren't really a new topic for most cases, but uh, we did some new interesting twists here that we're going to release at DEF CON that uh, were pretty interesting for us to do. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of walk through each one of the tools that we used, um, how we did it, uh, how we got around certain challenges. Uh, you know, we're going to go through and see that we get pick, picked up by AV. We're going to go ahead and bypass that. It's pretty much trivial for you guys to know to bypass any type of AV nowadays. Um, so we're going to walk through all that good stuff. 
So uh, without further ado, I'll kind of load up the site here that we had. So we got a, we got a site here that we found, and uh, what we ended up doing was, you know, the, the first thing we go after when we do penetration tests are we start looking at uh, web application layers because web applications are generally the, the pretty easy way to, to, to bypass into systems. A lot of companies invest in firewalls and all that great stuff. So, you know, our, our most avenue of attack is through the web application layer. And so what we did was we started looking through different web apps and identified some SQL injection. And, you know, for those, I mean, SQL injection, some simple stuff here. You know, hey, it blows up. We got some SQL injection here. We know, we know we're good. We, we know it's there. So from there, uh, we decided that we were going to see if it's running under DBO or SA, and it was. And uh, from there, we decided to um, start going and attacking the underlying operating system. How many of you out there have heard of XP Command Shell? Just a few. I'm disappointed in you guys. What we're taking a look at here is uh, the SA Exploiter. Uh, started this probably a year ago to uh, help automate uh, SQL injection full compromises through um, XP Command Shell. Uh, once we've identified that a web server is, uh, or the SQL server is executing queries under uh, or with obsessive privileges, uh, what we do is this tool just automates typing. This thing is a string generator. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this to deliver our payload. What's our payload going to be, Dave? Some nice Metasploit shellcode right here. Anybody ever heard of Metasploit? What's that? <laughs> Mutt task. So a little copy and paste. If you can do Control C, Control V, you're your elite. Click that little format shellcode button. Make some pretty things over there. Use that binary payload checkbox. Generate our injection string. Ooh, that looks pretty complicated too. So Dave, then what do we do? We copy that, right? Some more control C, control V. And what was our Metasploit shellcode that we had there? Metasploit shellcode was just a reverse TCP shell that we used through Metasploit and uh, copy and paste it. And what's unique about this, and we'll get more into detail once we start talking into individual tools, but we successfully figured out a way to bypass um, the 64K bit uh, limit through debug. So it's a nice interesting thing that we'll be showing you guys here in a second, but we'll, we'll do that more in depth here. So uh, basically, it's a Windows reverse shell straight off of uh, Metasploit.com. Copy, paste, click a button, check a checkbox, click generate, copy, paste, paste, put something in for the password, say go. Waiting. 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 This, part, this part's a dead time, so uh, I think I'm going to start taking my clothes off here, right? <laughs> wait, wait, you guys, were you guys cheering for the shirt or taking my clothes off? I couldn't tell. <laughs> Don't do that. Oh, what is that? Yeah. Blow it. There's the shell. Shell number one. Anybody see that? That was an elite hack. Control C, Control V. <laughs> Hard, huh? All right, so. In this pen test, what we did first was we created a custom reverse TCP shell uh, using assembly. And uh, what we did was when we injected it into our um, you know, uh, system that we're trying to attack, it was getting picked up by AV. And we'll go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. Not to mention, when we deliver our payload, there are no egress connections. We don't use TFTP, FTP, anything like that. And I'll talk about that later. So we can be dropping our Trojan or our key or whatever it might be onto the server and it never connects back to us. I mean, we showed that it could, but the payload delivery method is not required to do that. Okay, so uh, what we did here is we have our custom, uh, our custom EXE. Uh, basically, we can deliver any custom EXE we want, along with Metasploit shellcode. So I leave the options on this tool up to you. Uh, whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. I mean, Metasploit or, you know, I, I don't know what you want to do, what your goal is. 
uh, different pen tests have uh, different things that our clients want. So we uh, leave that in your hands. So this is a custom reverse shell. And AVG is up to date. As you can see, the signature is right here. It was updated today, 810 at uh, 149 p.m. So we're all up to date. It just couldn't connect with the connection manager. So right now we're going through and trying to deliver our payload. And right now it's dropping onto the system. And we'll, do, we'll show you detailed steps on how it's doing all that, but just kind of walk through it. And as it's going through, just waiting for it to execute. It takes a while. And we also have our command shell running here. Netcat. A, B didn't go well. Did you use the right workspace? I did. Let's go back over to the problem dog again. Sure. So uh, here we go. Some more hard stuff. You can point, click a button, browse, find your own executable. That's about all you have to know. Again, that ultra elite copy and paste. All right, so right now we're, we're delivering it. We got Netcat listening, and uh, hopefully AVG picks it up here. And we'll scan it too while we're waiting here just to show you that it is, it should be picked up. So you can see here it does detect the malware infection found one. some reason it's not getting detected on the other side. But anyways, most instances it will get detected by AVG. For some reason it's not picking it up. We'll go ahead and just manually scan this thing real quick. So uh, our during this, uh, this case today, during this pen test, uh, hey, that's great. Uh, we were getting flagged uh, by antivirus. So uh, if you guys were getting flagged by antivirus, what would you do? Or you could just we use a tool that we developed to get around it. And so what we did was we figured we took all we took all the antivirus signatures out there like ABG, Symantec, McAfee, Not32, Kaspersky, and uh, we created a smart database out of it. And uh, through there, what we do is we look at what antivirus signatures are flagging on on a specific binary. It's actually looking at what antivirus is detecting. And then it makes changes to that binary and automatically rewrites it for you to completely bypass it. And it starts off very simple, just looking at instructions, looking at uh, you know different uh, characters that it might go. And if it fails, it keeps going further and further until it does a custom packer or um, various encryptions. So what we ended up doing from that perspective is this tool that we're going to be releasing, it uh, goes through and automatically detects that. And I'll go ahead and show you that right now. Generally, when, do, when we do our pen tests, uh, we don't use automated tools. Well, I mean, we do use automated tools, but for a lot of times, we find that writing our own is a lot easier. So we go into this tainted folder here. You can see we got Netcat, we got PW Dump, and we got our custom reverse shell here. So we're gonna look at this reverse shell. We're gonna scan it with AVG. That pops up as infected. We do the same thing with PW Dump. Infection. Uh, and then we got Netcat. Thank you, AVG, for uh, flagging a very legitimate tool. Ha ha. Netcat's taken. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our tool, and really it's a brute forcer. I mean, we're looking at what AVG's flagging, and we keep trying different patterns. So what do we got to get around right now? Not 32 is still currently untested, but uh, right now we got Semantic, McAfee, and AVG in there. Since we have AVG on the system here, we're going to go ahead and run that. So you select AVG. And what are we going to do? We're going to do the reverse shell. Hit 1. It's looking for instruction signatures. And if you look at what it's going to find, if you see the instructions found, it found that, that ABG is specifically flagging on the offset 0040015A. So it's automatically going to recommend to you to change it to get past it. So do you want us to redo the actual uh, binary itself? Sure. Yes. Copied. Done. Again, another one of those 
extremely hard to things to do. Can you type numbers? Can All right, so scan with ABG. Z. Zero, no viruses came back. How about that? Like I said, we're all, uh, all about automating. At the end, you're going to see the, the big one. So now that we've successfully bypassed it, we go ahead and deliver our payload like you saw before, getting a reverse command trail through the system. Now what we're going to do is, um, since, since we are talking about uh, you know, malicious, code or malicious code being on, on the system, you know, what we had to do was, in, into the client, was go on there and say, well, hey, how do I, how do I go on here and, and, and look at what's going on? So we're going to go ahead and execute our, our command shell again through, um, through Automator. And we'll walk through all the functions, but I mean, you can do things like turn on XP command shell if it's disabled. Yeah, we'll take a, we'll take a more in-depth uh, look at this later. Right. So the client really wanted to know, you know, if we were breached, uh, walk us through what you do to find it. Uh, they just, they didn't understand and th they had no idea where to start. So uh, we helped them out with this. And while Dave's getting it set up here, uh, they really wanted to understand to, uh, to really push it to the uh, upper level execs, um, you know, what can be done, uh, what we're able to do, and uh, also educate them at the same time. Uh, very important during pen tests is the knowledge transfer. So uh, our clients understand, you know, what we're doing, what the importance of it is, and if they can do Control C, Control V, they can do the same thing. So we're just gonna wait for the established connection to hit again, and then on this side, we're gonna go ahead and get our tools ready. Now we've created a new tool called DLL Spy that looks at what DLL is being used. It's actually pretty simple, but uh, what we're gonna do is just look at very high level of what we'd be doing. So now we got a command shell again, we have established connections. So what's the first thing someone's gonna do that we do netstat? So we can see here we got a TCP established to this person on 4444. All right, great. Let's, let's take a peek at what's going on in TCP view. All right, looks good, standard. This is kinda interesting. System process zero. Okay. It's kind of kind of weird. So what we're going to do is look open, open process explorer and try to look at that process. Huh, it's not showing up. It's weird. If you look here, how many command shells do I have open here? I have one. It's showing I have two open. Kind of strange. That looks legit. Well, this is going to command.exe. That's that's kind of weird. It's using it's hooking into mood.exe. So there we go. We got we got something weird. So we can do DLL spy. Browse that directory. Ever heard of a legit Windows program called Moo? So we see it's using a bunch of different types of DLLs, and in those we have a lot of network sockets. Uh, we got a bunch of different things that it's connecting to, so we know for sure this is probably our malicious code. So being able to detect it, good, great stuff, fine. All right, let's go into the actual features itself of this tool, and. Fast Track itself, when we go into Fast Track itself, it really is an automated way of breaking into SQL injection. What you guys will see is we can automatically scan subnets, crawl websites, look for SQL injection, automatically attack it, try fuzzing to actually bypass, um, you know, and do string completion on SQL injection, automatically give you some really cool stuff, including some, some reverse GUIs that we'll demo. But we're going to get into Scott's tool here. It's going to go through each one of these, kind of walk you through what you're doing. So we're going to take a look at the ex SA exploiter here. Um, first of all, there's a lot of goals within this tool. We'll talk about those. But uh, the current state of SQL injection tools. Um, 
I really don't like it. You've got all these tools out there. Everybody says they work. Most of them don't. Everything automates it for you. Um, well, there's more to it than point and click. Um, this tool is made specifically for exploiting a mic Microsoft SQL servers uh, running under SA or those privileges DBO, as some of you may know. Um, it kind of made me mad with all these tools. I don't let all these things that, uh, you know, we're going to automate SQL injection. We're going to do that. It does everything for you. Well, a lot of the things, I mean, my tool collection is rather small for SQL. I choose to do it uh, manually because uh, I find that's a lot better and that this tool is uh, geared towards that. Uh, I would like to mention uh, SQL Ninja uh, is probably one of the best ones out there. Um, unfortunately, for beginners or script kiddies, whatever you might call yourself. Um, it's uh, only for Linux. It's a uh, command line. Uh, it has features like file transfer, uh, and it doesn't, it, it uses uh, Netcat to do that. Well, what's wrong with that? What if we have egress filtering? Um, that's going to be a problem. I still want to get my stuff up there. I find something that's uh, going to stop me, I'm going to get around it. So. It's Hackers are persistent. My SQL man. <laughs> and plus, you know, uh, a Netcat also uh, gets flagged by 90% of the antiviruses out there as well. So when I mean, you drop a Netcat on there, good stuff. So uh, like I said, most tools try to automate things. Um, I still believe manual is the way to go. You have more control over what you're doing, not as noisy, things like that. Um, after uh, doing a whole lot of typing, like I said, this is why the, the tool came out. Um, the tool that you're looking at is a string generator. That's all it is. We just generate the inch uh, string. Uh, that's the main function of this tool. Why is it nice? We don't have to remember all the SQL syntax. Um, there's obviously a lot in there, and uh, not everybody's an expert in every area. Uh, my original plans were to do everything in SQL Server on memory. Uh, Microsoft has some nice limitations. Uh, for example, you can have up to an 8,000 character string literal, and that's it. So why is that an issue? Uh, you can obviously see that we have a whole bunch of other things on here. So um, ran into some roadblocks, uh, went back to square one, and uh, changed the plans. Um, there's a lot of issues with double and triple um, nested uh, single and double quotes, uh, things like that. Again, why we want to be all manual. Um, the requirements when I was writing this tool, uh, we are ethical pen testers. Um, our requirements are a lot more stringent than uh, your malicious hackers. Uh, with our databases and our attacks, uh, generally our clients, if we're doing this in the production world, uh, they want to, you know, they want to keep the integrity of their database. So what's that mean? That means as a pen tester, I cannot update, delete, modify any kind of data. Um, you have to create um, stored procedures or tables or things like that for a lot of the known ways that are out there. So I said, well, we're not going to do that. So a couple of the requirements. Absolutely must not require an egress connection using FTP or TFTP. Why? Well, that's, that's a known uh, way that people do it. And uh, we want to be better than that. It must be easy to use. We already showed you. So you can do control C, copy paste. You can do it. Within Windows debug, uh, we already talked about that. You can convert hexadecimal stuff to binary. Like Dave said, we have a 64K limit with that. How many people knew that? Not very many. Who likes limits? Not me. 64K, no longer. We're going to show you how to get around that today. So our file transfer, so long, Windows debug. And generally when you're attacking systems, you, you know, generally when someone compromises the system, they throw a stager on there, which, you know, does a, a get to, a, to more files or does some sort of file transfer like uh, SQL Ninja does for, you know, uh, file transfers back and forth via Netcat. Uh, with this new attack, we don't have to do any type of things like that. It's not using any type of egress connections or file transfers. We do it all through SQL, uh, so it's pretty slick. Uh, like I said before, everything, uh, I le 
I like to leave the options in your hands. I don't like these tools that go out there and do something and I have no idea what it's doing. So all the options on here are for your convenience. Um, things like Metasploit, we have all that shell code out there, uh, th or the shell code generator. I don't care what you do, I'd leave that option up to you. We have Metasploit out there, so let's utilize it. So I did. Uh, what we're gonna talk about next is uh, how we actually transfer our payload over. Um, this is a, a new technique that, uh, to my knowledge, nobody else has done, uh, and this helps us bypass that 64K limit. Um, pretty much what we do is we, we're gonna use Windows Debug to transfer over a small uh, executable, I think about 5K, and we're gonna use Windows Debug to put that over there. Uh, pretty much you, ex you echo hexadecimal uh, representation of my custom file that I wrote, and we're gonna get that over there, and we're gonna have a custom binary over on the system that's 5K. What does that do? It's a hex to binary converter. What's that mean? What we can do now is echo as much hexadecimal stuff we want to into a text file, tell it to go at it, and it'll convert all that to binary. But there's no limitations. We don't have that 64 limit, 64K limitation. So, first thing we're gonna do is echo text into that text file, use Windows Debug to get our custom converter over there. We're gonna, we're gonna echo the custom, or excuse me, our hex values for our payload, whatever it is, whether it's your custom Trojan or your Metasploit uh, code, pretty much we just put Metasploit code in a, in a exe stub and a wrapper. And whatever it is, we're gonna, e we're gonna echo that hex over into, into the uh, text file. We use our custom converter to convert it, and then we can execute it, do whatever we want. So let's show this. We're going to use uh, Metasploit shellcode. Again, copy paste, format shell code. Just preps it for me. And you can do this with anything you want, any custom binary, um, interpreter VNC inject, uh, uh, Metasploit VNC inject, the interpreter uh, console, anything you want to at this point. So again, there's no limit. I mean, if you want to upload two gigs, it might take an hour for it to compile it back to an executable, but uh, at this point, there's no limit. Yeah, and, and these colors are a little off uh, for some reason. Uh, they don't look like this normally. So we want to use the checkbox here, use binary payload, because we did that over here. And we're going to say generate. And we can see that there's a lot of stuff going on here. Basically all we're doing is uh, piggybacking commands onto the SQL server. Uh, a whole bunch of them in a row. Um, we really don't care uh, how long it takes because it's all going to be queued up. And what Scott's demonstrating right now is the post method. Obviously, if you're using get, you're going to have to split this up a bit. Um, when we show uh, fast track, it does automatically detect if you're using post get and splits it up into chunks so that uh, you, know, you can get around any post or get restrictions. Not a Mac user. So You're lost. So we have a reverse shell shell code here, and we need to get netcat listening. Which, uh, Okay, so now we have netcat listening. Say go. And if you look over here on our server, I mean, it's gonna spike up quite a bit. Now we're using 100% CPU, and that's when it's doing the debug conversion, as well as when it's taking all of that uh, uh, hexadecimal code and conversion, converting it back into binary. And 
energy shell for us. So copy and paste Metasploit shell code, SQL injection, uh, it's up to you. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, no other tool can do this. SQL Ninja can do uh, interpreter and uh, VNC uh, DLL injection. But uh, to my knowledge, nobody else can do this. So that's how you do it with uh, Metasploit shell code. Now we're going to show you how to do it with custom EXE. Okay, this is our custom. Uh, this is our custom reverse shell that we wrote. Use binary payload, generate. Need to add a port and the IP address. And we say go. And our server is converting it. Sometimes, depending upon the, the size of your payload, uh, it can take up to five or ten minutes, uh, I mean, if you put a huge file up there, uh, that's going to be a lot of uh, I.O. for the system to do. So whether we use Metasploit shell code or your own custom EXE, uh, this is shows you pretty much uh, what the capabilities are. There's other options within uh, the tool. These ones are uh, pretty much uh, well known. Uh, we have options to turn on XP command shell. Uh, if you believe it's turned off, um, we can add a, lo a local user account, uh, pretty much automate uh, a lot of the things we might want to do, disable firewalls, an antivirus, uh, we can connect back via FTP, uh, pretty much automates SQL injection um, running under SA. Uh, the main features that we wanted to show you though was the metal split shell code and uh, the binary payload transfer. There's other options to it as well. The blind uh, fuzz list generator. Um, if we have uh, things being pre or displayed back to the screen, uh, we're not really sure what, what the different uh, types of data are that are being presented back. Uh, basically, it's just going to generate a fuzz list uh, with different types. And you can put that through like web scarab, uh, through the fuzzer in there, and go through and see when you get correct data back. Pretty much we're just automating it. There is an auto exploit option if you have it in the get request. Uh, depending upon the web server, most of the get requests are going to have limitations for how long they're going to be. So there, that's going to be, you're going to have to split up your injection, which could be very long as we can see here. And Dave and Andrew will talk about that later. All right, so that's the uh, SA exploiter. Uh, towards the end of the presentation, uh, we'll let you know where you can get that, and uh, it'll be available to download to to uh, use ethically in your own pen tests. All right, who wants to see some really crazy stuff right now? So let's let's wake you guys up. Come on. All right, so for you guys that don't know Fast Track, uh, really what it was was I, I decided to learn Python a, a while back, and I uh, was more of a C-sharp guy. And uh, thanks to, to Mutz, I, 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 I wish I didn't learn Python because my wife hates me, and I'm up coding at late nights of the hour. So um, special thanks to him for that. But uh, what Fast Track is, is I really try to automate a lot of different types of attacks out there and some unique ones. Um, I originally came up with the, the um, attack for mass client attack using Metasploit, now Egypt from um, uh, Metasploit has now created the autopone feature for that. So there's a lot of different types of attacks out there that you can do with Fast Track. Specifically, the one that we're going to do here, I mean, we, what you just saw on Scott's tool, uh, we took that one step further and really automated uh, pretty crazy stuff. So what we're going to do and what you're going to see 
So we're going to scan a, a subnet for web servers, uh, looking for you know web servers out there. So automatically can identify them, crawl them, uh, look through the whole website. And look at um, every form parameter, trying to see if it can, uh, you know, get a correct SQL syntax. We can do both um, error and blind-based SQL injection, automatically inject, and uh, get us some some reverse shells and some reverse GUIs. Here's the syntax. Uh, I also built a uh, front-end web web server for it, so that uh, you know, you, if for you guys that just want to point and click, you can also do that, and I'll show that uh, towards a little bit later. But uh, as we're seeing here, we're running fast track. Uh, we're running the SQL ponage on it. We're going to crawl uh, the site using blind-based uh, SQL inject, or I'm sorry, error-based SQL injection. We'll demo uh, error-based here in a few. That's the IP address we're attacking, and um, you know we're using uh, a Metasploit VNC inject uh, using the Shikati Gay Nai encoding. Does anybody know what that stands for the, in Japanese? There is no hope. Aaron Mutz gets a T-shirt. And we do a little bit more uh, different things here. So once we're crawling the site, and once we identify uh, form parameters, we automatically start attacking them. If we're not running under uh, SQL SA, we automatically try to elevate our privileges. Uh, we turn on XP command shell if it's disabled. We turn off DEP, uh, a bunch of various other things that we try to do. And Andrew, you want to explain what it's doing here? So basically right now, it's, uh, as you guys can see, it's crawling the, the website that he entered. Um, right now, we're actually looking for the href tags inside the HTML. Um, some of you are probably wondering what happens if you have URLs embedded in JavaScript. Um, right now, we don't have that functionality added. Um, before we release the final version, we will add that. Um, keep in mind that this tool is in beta version. So when we release it to the fast track, we're, we're expecting a lot of feedback. Um, we're expecting bugs. Um, so we, want, we, we need that feedback because before we release the final version, we want to make sure that it, you know, we get everything worked out. Um, so right now, it's crawling the entire website, um, looking for every single URL that's branched off the, the website. <coughs> Originally, we were going to do the NSA.gov, but we thought we'd get a lot of, uh, <laughs> lot, of, lot of trouble for that, so we decided not to do it as far as a fake website. But uh, right now, we're just doing a fake website that we created. And keep in mind that if you're scanning um, a, a website such as like WebShots or something like that, some huge-ass website, um, we actually allow you to um, put a depth parameter. Um, in our spider, so uh, if you don't want it to take two or three days to spider your entire website, you can add a depth parameter of two. Um, you know, it'll take you know 15, 20 minutes. We won't obviously won't get the entire entire website, but um, you know, if if that's what you're looking for and you don't want it to take a long time, uh, we we give you that we give you that option. And just finishing up here, we decided to do a very long site for some reason that uh, would you know allow a lot of dead time in the middle of a presentation. So. Um, <laughs> Who wants a T-shirt? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> hey, you only get one. There's only one per person here. Hey, nice hand. Nice hand. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> So it's still crawling again. Um, it's gonna take some time, depending on how large the website is. Again, you're gonna want to manipulate the depth parameter a little bit um, to speed things up. And at this point, we don't really have to do anything. I mean, we just let it run, right, and it's know, gonna do everything. Attack it, try to fi finish the strings for you, and do everything else to that effect. And so. as Scott said, he likes to do the manual attacks. I really don't. I'm lazy. As much as I can automate shit, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I created this tool, or Dave and I both created this tool. Um, Point, you know, basically, you, you, you put in the URL, you let it go. If it finds SQL injection, you want to exploit, yes, you got a shell. So, so as you can see here, we're, we found a SQL exception in text password, and after this, it flies off the, the seat of your pants. It's automatically elevating our privileges to SA, if not already. It's turning up depth. It's, um, a, you know, enabling SP command shell. And then here, we're using a get request. So what we did was, it's all dynamic. So regardless of what payload you put in there, if it's 10 megs, it's automatically going to split it up into chunks so that it does get out to the server using GET request. So as you can see here, we're taking our 64K uh, debug bypass, the, the hex to binary uh, payload that we initially used in Scott's talk. And we're going through and chunking it up into four different chunks. And there's a custom uh, text file that right now we have the different um, SQL injection parameter, so you know, like a single quote, maybe a single quote admin, but that's totally customizable. Um, whatever you guys feel that you know to, to identify SQL injection, you can add it to that file.
So right now what's happened basically is it found the URL that is that has SQL injection on it. It's deliv delivering our um, our Windows debug bypass payload. Um, once it gets on once it gets on the server, it's going to compile it, and then we can actually uh, pretty much deliver any payload that you guys want. Right now we actually have three custom ones inside this module. We have the VNC inject, um, Metasploit interpreter, and then our customized reverse um, reverse shell. Uh, but again, it's totally customizable. You can you can put any payload in there you want. Um, it may take some time, but so it launches an extern window right now. And what we're doing is we're we're injecting the um, um, our interpreter inject right now. So if you guys are familiar with interpreter and Metasploit, pretty nice way to use it. Do pretty much whatever you want to at this point. Because here we got it. So again, this, this is a this is a completely automated tool. Um, Dave and I developed this tool with the mindset we wanted to be as automated as possible, as script key as possible. CIS local can run this tool if he wants to. Um, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, basically, again, you type in URL or a subnet. If you use a subnet option, basically you have the you have the option to you know to put in a class C or whatever it is, um, and then what we'll do is we'll actually go through the entire class C looking for web servers. After it finds the web servers, it will present the user with the list. The user the user then has one or two options. It can it can scan the it can actually scan the entire list that it found. So if you know you put a class B in there and it finds 500 web servers then obviously you can go through each single one and it will scan them, look for SQL injection, finds it, will allow you to exploit it. Um, so those are basically two options, scan a subnet or a single URL. And right here we're gonna do the, the actual GUI itself, so we'll get a nice little graphical user interface in the back end. The reason why we wanted to release the, the Windows GUI is because we know everybody at DEF CON uses Windows. Um, so <laughs> we wanted to release a nice tool for that. <laughs> I'm so getting beat up. I wonder, I wonder, <laughs> wonder how many people you just offended. <laughs> <laughs> so really, what we did, we, we didn't we didn't invent the wheel. We know we're using a known exploit, but what we did do is something. But we think is pretty cool. Um, something that we haven't seen yet. I mean, again. Completely automated, no manual techniques, um, and, and honestly, it, it, it will find SQL injection. Hey guys, let's give it up. Did you see that? What do we have here, Dave? Nice command, Sean. You see, I'm not, I'm not not switching over anything. This is uh, the window right here for the actual one, and this is the actual VNC, as you can see up here. Full remote desktop, automated. Does it get any easier than that? For those of you that uh, listen to l or know Lolcats, I, uh, I have, I've been having a little Lolcats uh, moment there, so I has been pwned, oh knows. <laughs> and I think what we forgot to mention too, when it, when it finds SQL injection, the way it's doing it is obviously it's injecting the form parameters, submitting. If it comes back with a SQL error message, you know, like SQL OD ODBC message or something like that, we're using regular expressions on that page to find SQL injection. So for those of you that want to use a web interface like Metasploit, you got SQL components right here. You got blind base, error based, whatever you want to do. Uh, we won't go through the blind base because that's going to really put some dead time in. What we're thinking about doing is uh, adding time based attacks in so that we can actually validate that the blind SQL injection is working properly. Um, at that point, it would initiate the attacks. At that point, so that's that, uh, that should be uh, hopefully put into the, to the next release there. But uh, as of right now, it just kind of really brute forces uh, blind SQL at that point, trying to look for anything a shot in the dark. And before we release the final version, right now it, it currently can't do um, HTTPS over SSL, obviously. Um, so we'll add that in before the final version, and we're ask, actually going to add in a login functionality. So if the page has a login and you have credentials, and you want to continue spidering after you're a, an authenticated user, we'll add that in as well. So all I did was I entered all my stuff in. It uh, spidered it, found a single website. Um, it's going to go ahead and automatically crawl it and go through all the various things like that. Um, once we finish the crawling, it's going to go through and do everything that we did. And as you can see, that is through the web interface. So, you know, it has a bunch of different options you can use as interactive mode, where it's kind of like a menu-driven. Has the command line mode, so you guys can script it. 
and uh, obviously the um, um, web web GUI mode. All right, uh, so we showed those two real quick um, and, and what's going on with Fast Track. I'll, I'll show you guys now uh, the AV and what we're doing. Uh, we'll so go pretty simple at this point. Uh, we lost our reverse engineer, John Melvin, if you saw that he was supposed to uh, be on this topic. He's uh, unfortunately getting married, so uh, he didn't make it to DEF CON. So <laughs> I'll uh, try to keep a spot here. All right, so a lot of antivirus signatures out there are really pretty basic in all forms. They look for specific things in files to flag on. Um, and those are what you, you know you see on the signatures. Uh, we did a review on uh, Nod32 uh, that we completely destroyed it and went through it. I mean, there, there's really nothing out there at this point that's really getting past it. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty trivial at this point to bypass it. So what we wanted to do was create a tool that automated it for us so that when we're doing a pen test, we get nailed by AV. We write a custom pa uh, payload. It automatically rewrites it for us. So I'll show you what it's doing and how we're doing it. So if you look in our folder here, we got a uh, folder here called Tainted. And those are the ones that uh, it, it's getting flagged on. So you got the reverse shell, PW dump, and netcat, which we won't do PW dump since it's not getting flagged. But like PW dump, for example, AVG was looking for like, you know, certain characters like passwords. So all you need to really do for that to bypass it is change all the S's with dollar signs. Wow. You know, so I mean, it shows you how really basic these are. But uh, wh what, it, what we'll do is I'll, I'll load up this into Ollie real quick. load our uh, tainted reverse shell that gets blasted. And this error right here means that it's already packed. And in most cases, you know, this is the type of error you're going to get when there's, there's, a, there's a packed uh, binary. So from here, the first signal it's doing, it, and especially in a packer, is it's jumping to a specific address. So we're going to go to that address that it's jumping to. We see these two flags here. Now, our tool, what it looks for is what specifically is AV flagging now? Why is it stopping it? So in, in, in antivirus, it's specifically stopping these two um, functions right here. It's flagging on these two. So all we need to really do is change these around to be something different than AV, the AVG or Symantec or McAfee is going to find. And before we came here, we, we ran it through uh, uh, virus total. And uh, after these changes to it, it got through McAfee, Symantec, AVG, and Kaspersky. So those are uh, pretty good ones um, out there to get around, right? So all we're going to do here is we're going to change this to, to move EBX instead of ESI. And then change this around to be move ESI to EBX. Switching them around. All we're going to do is follow and dump. We're going to save this file. So here's our reverse shell that we just saved, the new one, right? So we got reverse shell.exe. And we'll go to the we'll go to the def container folder real quick just to run a scan against it, just to make sure that was it what I was in fact using. Malware, de oh, malware detected. We go to our new one that we just wrote on the C drive. Malware not detected. Now there's a bunch of different things you can do. I mean, this is really basic, but our tool automatically gradually gets more and more complex as it goes along. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Actually, one got me in the side of the head there. <laughs> that was Mutz, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know where I was at at that point. 
Uh, Dave, uh, what's Lemon Party? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, back onto our topic, Gary. <laughs> it's I'm a game of bingo gone horribly wrong, so. Um. <laughs> All right, so we, we, we took a, a look at uh, reverse, uh, reverse shell.exe. Now we're going to look at netcat. What does netcat get flagged at? And like I said, it's, it's really trivial to bypass these things at this point. And uh, so what our, our, our tool is going to do at this point is the first one it found was instructions. You know, it jumped to a specific address, and all we had to do was change those two values around. Well, what happens if you do something different? So we're looking in our tainted folder here. We're going to look at uh, netcat. Oh, and here I'll, I'll just demo that the tool's actually working too. I forgot to, to mention that. So, do reverse shell.exe and we'll do, because uh, you know, if you rewrite something, a lot of times it doesn't work. So, we'll just do 444, 10.2155.2444. Bam. <laughs> All right, so on the netcat side of things, you see here, it, it, it didn't find any instructions that it could change to that AV was flagging on. But it was looking at uh, immediate constants used by AV uh, that's getting detected. So you look here, it's jumping to this specific address here, 00401178. Well, there's also other instructions inside uh, Netcat that does that same jump. So what our tool automatically detected was, well, why don't we just rewrite this specific one as flagging on and move to another jump that is jumping to the same address? What is that going to do? Let's, tr let's find out. And just so we know, we'll go to the DEF CON folder like we did before. Go to our tainted. Man, my head really hurts now. <laughs> that was a good one. Over someone, someone was really angry at me. <laughs> at least it smells a little Yeah, it smells like lemon now instead of what it, you know, a bunch of guys. So that's, that's kind of nice. Okay, so we see here that the spyware was found. So what we're going to do is open up Ollie again. Go to netcat, and we're going to go to that address that's specified there. Which actually I have that up here too. I want to do that. Okay. Where is that tool? So we'll go through this one more time so I can see what actual address it is there. I totally forgot. The lemons, I swear. <laughs> All right, so flagged on 00401178. All right, so right here you can see, um, am I in the wrong one? There we go. Oh, no. Zero, zero. All right, so here we see uh, movie VC, movie CX, and uh, if you look at where it flagged on a netcat, it says that it flagged on jump short right here at offset uh, 1137. So we go to 1137. You see here, it's jumping right here. So we need to find another one that's going to 1178 that we can just change around. So if you look here, we got another address right there that looks nice and tasty for us to use. So we're going to change that to 114C. Do the same thing we did last time. We 
you don't know that EXE right here. No more AV. <laughs> and again, these are all really basic attacks that you can do. I mean, there's you know polymorphic encryption and packers and all this crazy stuff out there you can do, and it will eventually do that if it does get flagged. But at this point, to be honest with you, there really isn't too much out there that's not going to get flagged on in the simple steps uh, because they pretty much suck. Sorry, if there's anybody out there for me in those companies, I apologize. What I'm going to do now is uh, show you a couple little nice little functionality features uh, of FastTrack uh, that you guys can, can see out there. It's pretty neat stuff. Um, it is on the Backtrack CD. You can also download it. Um, I have written a uh, Ubuntu installer for it as well as a Gentoo installer and uh, also a vanilla installer. So if you're using you know, something out there like Slackware or anything else, uh, it automatically detects it and installs it for you. Oh, in addition to um, these, these attacks that we demonstrated here are no different on a Windows Server 2008 box uh, using SQL Server 2008. We have successfully tested it on that as well, um, and we're actually able to get um, Interpreter to work no problem. So that was pretty uh, cool, interesting find that we did see. Um, so, you know, Server 2008, SQL Server 2008, not a big deal. All right, so we're going to use a little fast track here real quick. We'll use the GUI. And I can't use the GUI because I did write it, so don't catch me. I'm just using a Windows 2000 server because uh, it's the only one that I didn't have on patch at the time. But um, it does some pretty cool stuff. If you look here, here's my address, 55.6. You do things like, um, if you're anybody familiar with the uh, auto pwn feature in Metasploit, um, you know, you have to type in all those commands like db create, you know, dbm app. So I kind of automated that real quick, and we'll just do a quick port scan of that. Port 135, 445.10.21.55.6. And all you do is hit enter. It's automatically going to do everything for you. Automatically port scan. It says the host is down, so let me do a PN real quick. does really work, I swear. Huh. Alright, so we'll move on to SQL Brooder. What does SQL Brooder do, Dave? So for those of you that uh, are doing pen tests, we, our, our main point of entry when we go into companies, and it's so simple, is uh, companies that, especially those that like load thin clients through SQL, they install the uh, SQL Server 2000, 2005. They put blank passwords or really easily guessable passwords um, on port 1433. The uh, the SA uh, password is blank by default in 2000 and earlier, FYI. So I mean, what we what we do is we just do mass scans and, and fast track, and you can just do subnet ranges to test for these. And it looks for SA accounts, it automatically brute forces them, and it gives you shells back to them. So you can see here the following SQL servers were compromised. It found a blank password. Which one do you want to jump into? Jumps into a, a shell. Now, if you're using SQL Server 2005, it automatically detects if it's disabled and re enables the XP command shell for you um, and gets you full access back into it again. So it gets you a full, full root compromise on that. Now, what's been incorporated into the new um, uh, Metasploit, which is uh, from Egypt, was the uh, auto uh, client pwn feature. 
where it sets up a fake web server for you, and then as soon as someone uh, connects to you, um, it automatically starts running a brute force of exploits against the system. It's kind of like NPAC, uh, NPAC on steroids. And uh, what, we're, what we're working on here is, um, and it's going to be released in the next fast track version, is um, it automatically does, uh, we wrote a custom EtherCAT filter, um, and what it does is it poisons all um, traffic going out 80, and then as soon as someone goes to browse the website, it automatically redirects to you, and it's doing a whole bunch of attacks against you. It should be pretty slick. So we're listening on, uh, on our specific port, and what it's doing is it's loading, um, you know, the interpreter um, session right here. And so all we need to do is have someone connect to us on 80. And so, you know, in an EtherCAT type of attack, it would definitely do that. And everything breaks for the demonstration. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were out of t-shirts, so yeah, that's our yeah, last lemons. color. <laughs> Who wants a lemon? Yeah, who wants a lemon? <laughs> no takers? <laughs> yes. All right, guys, that was it for us. I appreciate your time, and that's all we got. Thanks. Uh, one, one last thing to mention. Uh, the SA Exploiter tool can be run on Linux. Use Wine, Mono, something like that. Right. Um, and, Dave, where can we get these tools? So if you go to um, our main website, securestate.com, and there's a free tool section on the very bottom there. It uh, should be available tonight. And there we go. You see that. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time.